All right. Hello, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Hi, Sarah. It's so good to be here. I love okay. spending time with you and I like uh, making jewelry. So like, why didn't we just do the two together? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly it, my friend. And it is, I have to say, I um, I went to bed last night and I said this to, to Rodrigo, like, you know, it is always a good day when I get to start my day hanging out with my bead friends. And Nile, you are one of the best. It's, it's such a pleasure. Aww. To have you here. Not only are you such a near and dear friend to me in this industry, but you are so darn talented. And it is just like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being here. Today. Thank you. Um, that I don't even know what to say to follow up with that, but <laughs> I, I just will say that I think my talent and my excitement is just driven by good product and good people in the industry and. I think I'm still lucky to be working with Jesse James Beads up to this day and to share our bead journey together. Absolutely. Um, so every, for everyone that's tuning in, if you don't yet know who we are in the presence of today, this is Nile Patel. Nile Patel is an incredible jewelry designer. He is also the owner, proprietor, manufacturer for Silver, Silk, and More. And on top of that, he has an incredible day job where he is a graphic designer. Nile, you are such a Renaissance man in terms of art <laughs> and craft. And I mean it when I, I really do idolize you and everything that you do. Oh, likewise. Um, I'm just, it's it's a crazy world as we all know <laughs> and um i don't know just just i need the, all the activities i can get my hands on to be creative and to keep myself motivated and certainly um having i think this industry to have my creative outlet because my day job isn't always as glamorous um as this is and so again i get to just share that with you guys and you guys i'll just keep it real so i think that's also appreciated but yeah, I just, I love that we get to do this and uh, this world has now transformed us into virtually working together mm -hmm. and our fun and activity is then shared with everybody else on Facebook and the online platform. So it's a fun time. You know what, it's funny that you mentioned that about how we're virtually working together because you know, the pandemic has really has, has driven us away from each other in so many ways in terms of like friends and family that we're accustomed to seeing. But with the industry, I feel like I've gotten to hang out mm -hmm. with my industry friends more because we're doing, yeah. we're doing these virtual hangouts, which is. Yeah, I agree. For sure. For sure. I would say it's the same for me too. I think for me, the industry has always been sort of a farther reach just because my lack of traveling, you know, I, I do have a day job, so I do pay attention to that. And I'm, that's sort of my sole focus um, and priority. But I think this format has helped to kind of balance both out. And now I'm able to reach companies and people that I would never have been able to just from not traveling, <laughs> um, but traveling virtually to everyone's homes. Yes, yeah, that's that's really a great way of putting it, of, of being able to um, to virtually transport ourselves right there into your living room where you're beating mm -hmm. where you may be. Um, so let's just take a minute here, check in with people that are joining in with us mm -hmm. today. Um, guys, if you are joining in and you want to give this video a share to your friends, that would be fantastic. Um, we've got Karen Yates. Hi there. Oh, she said she didn't receive a notification. Facebook is weird sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. um, Lisa Dunbar Norman, who's coming in from New Orleans, looking forward to be making some hey. more story today. Hey, girl. Yes. Um, we've got Anita, Diana, Sylvia. Hi, Maggie, Mimi Pitts, Linda Frank. Hello, Trisha, Lucy Roberts. Guys, thanks so much for coming and joining us at this um, East Coast lunch hour with me. I recognize a lot of those names. <laughs> They're my um, fan favorites as well, and they've always been so, so supportive, and I enjoy seeing their name ch uh, chime in every time. Yeah, it's so nice, guys. Um, when we are doing these Facebook lives, it is so nice. It's nice to see that we have a nice audience, but it's always so beautiful to see your name pop in and just say hello or say where you're from and introduce yourself to the community or just, you know, if you say hi often, just to check in with us. We, we love it. it I don't, I know I'm speaking for both of us when I say we love that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, 
Nile, um, let's um, let's start with this. So Nile is the, you know, Nile is the owner and manufacturer of Silver Silk. We've talked about Silver Silk before in the channel, but before we dive into this project, tell us what Silver Silk is, and if you could tell me and our crew here what really gets you going, like why you really love Silver Silk. Oh boy. Um, so Silver Silk is a knitted wire jewelry chain. It's machine knit and um, it can be used to string beads like with large holes right over the chain. Um, you can sew through it. You can um, chop it up into little pieces and string it that way. It's because of the machine knit technology and the material that it's made with, it cuts easily without fraying. And so there's a lot of, of um, different types of techniques that you can do with it. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to braid with it, in fact, with a Kumi Hemo board. And so that's just one of the many different ways that you can use it. What inspires me through my avenue with Silver Silk, I think there's just so much with it that I never thought I would receive. Um, I, there's that satisfaction of, I think, creating my own product at the end of the day. And overseeing the the production value the quality um the amount of di like variation i can do with the knitted machine with the knitting machine um the technology and innovation that's behind it so that all is i think one aspect of it that just i just love tinkering on the machine at the end of the day um i think the community and outreach and um, connecting with people is another aspect that i really enjoy um, I love working with my industry friends such as you and my girls from um, Softflex Wire and um, many other companies, Tierra Cast, Vintage. There's just, everyone plays so well with Silver Silk because it's such a unique product, a unique type of jewelry chain that's really not out there. So um, I just, I like exploring those different possibilities with the different types of materials that I can combine with it. Um, what else? I, I get to fulfill the product at the end of the day. So everything that runs through the e-commerce, through um, fulfillment, shipping, all runs through me, which is quite tedious. But it is um, when you when I get to put my little sticker that says uh, knitted by Nile with love on each and every package, there's something satisfying about that as well. So there's just a lot of there's just a lot of heart that comes with it that I I just don't receive from my day job. And so that really fulfills and my, it fills my, my soul cup, as I say, I love um, that. with all the good vibes. I really love that. And I, I agree with that with, um, with Jesse James, because we, we manufacture our beads and there's a lot of nuts and bolts that go into um, creating the beaded designs mm -hmm. and the customers that we sell to. But at the end of the day, I, I have found so much fulfillment with doing our B2C, our business to consumer sales, yeah. to our fans that we are interacting with here on Facebook. Because we, we see you, we see you here on the live stream, we see your comments. And then when we receive an order from you, it's just like, oh my gosh, my friend. Or you package their order up and it really is truly packaged with love. When you when you mm -hmm. when you purchase something from a small business, there truly is like the memes that go around on the internet say there truly is a person back there doing a little happy yeah. dance because <laughs> You bought something from us and we're able to share what we love with you. So I, I feel you nearly a hundred percent. One other thing I think that's just a recent development is I get to use my powers for good. And so I'm actually partnering up with a project that I'm doing um, a live class with Katie Hacker with is for Beads of Courage. So um, we're gonna be kitting 50 kits for just Silver Silk, but there's two other companies I think that are participating in this. Don't have all the details quite yet, um, but that is a recent development that's being put together very quickly. Um, but Beads of Courage, like if you guys don't know about it, please go look them up and please um, donate anything that you can to help this organization. They help kids with terminal illnesses that um, for their and their families. And it's such a near and dear cause, I think, just for the fact that it does hit home with the word family in it. Um, for me at least. And so the people that run it are pure of heart as well. Um, and I, I just want to do everything I can for them. So this is, again, a new new thing that I'm doing because I have it now in my um, bandwidth to be able to contribute to that. That That is excellent, Nile. Beads of Courage is so amazing. We talk about Beads of Courage a lot here at Jesse James Beads. 
And I am so thrilled for you and, and really excited for Beads of Courage that Silver Silk is on board. It's fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely. Yay. So, okay, what are we doing today, Neela? Give us, you gave me a brief rundown before we got started. Tell our crowd yeah. what we're gonna be working on and then let's, uh, let's put the camera and do it to it. Perfect. Um, well, I picked out some colors from some strands that you sent me. Um, so I'm going to be using the Haunted Halloween mix, but in a very different way. The colors lend themselves well to Mardi Gras. And I think this is one of the cool things about Jesse James beads is you guys have like a, a basic theme for each of your strands. But really, if you look at the colors very closely, they can translate into very many different um, holidays or um, you know, different occasions, I think, just depending on the colors. So I'm gonna be combining that with some Tensha beads that you also sent me over, um, some big pearls, and we're gonna be doing some big chain braiding with some silver silk. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip my camera around and just show you what I got on the table. Mila, take it away. Awesome, All right, awesome. Spotlight you right now. Give Mila the full visual here, or give us the full visual of Mila. Yeah, can you guys see everything okay from your end? I'm gonna make sure that it comes live on the feed here. Let's do this, perfect. Okay, so um, these are the beads that I was talking about. Now to save us some time, I went ahead and um, applied a simple loop to everything. And there's plenty of tutorials that I think um, you guys have done at least with Sarah Ellis and with some of the other designers on how to make simple loops on either end of the beads. And so um, I'm not gonna end up covering that for today's tutorial, but um, this is very easy to do, I promise, for those of you who are new to, uh, to beading in general. Um, highly encourage you guys to check out the other Jesse James Beads tutorials to learn how to make those and to manufacture them across the beads. So, Neela, it's a really yeah. great tutorial for Simple Loop, actually. So if we have time at the oh, end yeah. of the video, just show us one because he's got this technique called breaking the totally. mat. Totally. And if you haven't yeah. done it before, it's, I, I think it's the best one out there, Neelay, personally. I think I got a little it. piece of wires out, out here, so I'll save that. Okay. Just in case we get to it. Yeah, for sure. Um, what else? Oh, these are those holographic tension beads that I was talking about. Now, these are beautiful. These, I love these, my favorite. They're glowy and perfect for Mardi Gras. <laughs> um, let's see. So I'm to make the simple loops though, let me talk about the wire. I think you might have another brand um, on Jesse James Beads. I'm not 100% sure, I'm so sorry, Sarah, but um, I think Artistic Wire for sure has 20 gauge wire. Sure. Um, but really craft wire is what you're looking for. And so, um, and in and, and 20 gauge as well. And then I don't think I'm gonna be using 26. So I'm not even gonna show that. Um, and then you're gonna need some silver silk. So here I've got Fern, otherwise known as Olive, I think on the Jesse James Beads um, website. Yeah, so you're Danielle, gonna need- Danielle, Danielle is on the comments. We need to make that change on the back end. Miss D. Yeah. Yeah, that way, um, that way our products sync together and people will know exactly what to look for too. So this one is Purple Passion or Amethyst. I guess it's it's um, interchangeable names there as well. So I have one unit of that. This already matches so well with the Halloween mix, which otherwise I'm rebranding as Mardi Gras now. Um, and then I've got two things of Arctic White. I think this is gonna be a great offset for adding in another color that's that's not silver. And I think the silver would be a little bit much against all of this gold and copper that's happening. So the Arctic white is gonna be a really beautiful contrast, um, a lighter color to the, to the grouping here. And so you'll need two units of that. So a total of four chains is what's gonna get us started. So I'm gonna set these beads aside for now and we're gonna get back to that here in a little bit and I'm gonna show you how to put that chain together. But in the meantime, let's, um, let's talk about this Kumihima board. And Sarah, I believe you got some for Jesse James beads now, right? We do, we do. They are, they should be loading up to the site any minute now. Actually, we just got them in. Oh, perfect. Okay, so whenever they are on the site, this is what you'll need to look for. Um, 
I am just going to lay my chains out here so I can get it organized and show you guys what I'm doing. But I'm lining up all of my chains and my chains come in a three foot length. So that's going to be a, if you think about it, a 36 inch necklace <laughs> um, by itself. And we're adding beads to it on top of that. So it's going to be a very long necklace. But this is one of those necklaces that I think will be great for um, a technique that I like to call color blocking. But in this case, because we're mixing up all our colors together, we're going to be doing more of like a, a material blocking. I'm just going to coin it a different term now. So once you have your Kumi Hemo board out, and let me cover what this is real quick. Um, this is typically used for creating a braided cord. And the cord is as thick as, as, as many as strands that you have braiding with it. Um, typically, the types of cords that are braided together are like, I don't know, like maybe one millimeter um, silk or any sort of yarns or um, smaller nylon cords. Uh, in this case, since we're using a thicker chain to braid with, um, we're not gonna be inserting it into these little slits that you normally would to follow a certain type of braid pattern. Instead, we're gonna be focusing on the bigger dots here. This is just gonna keep our um, braiding organized and just a, a format because it's got the central hole here for our chain to drop through and just to kind of keep it out of the way as we're braiding along. But to set up our braid, um, it's very easy. In fact, here's where you kind of need your 20 gauge wire. So I'm just gonna cut about six inches. You don't need actually too much to get started. About six or seven. And then um, this is really one of my favorite features of silver silk is because you can just sew right through the the chain there, um, which is again, a very fine knit with very thin, thin wire. And so I'm just gonna string it right through and I'm gonna alternate my colors. So I'm gonna do uh, Arctic white, a fern, and I'm going two beads below from where the chain stops. In this case, if the chain is sort of popping out, I just kind of push it back in and then I can get it back kind of aligned where I need it to be. Um, and then I'm gonna do, whoops, another Arctic white. And I'm gonna end with my purple here. Okay, so I've strung it right through. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bunch it up together so it stacks on top of each other. Okay, just like that. So you can see that all four are now bunched together in this lovely little package. So then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. By the way, I didn't even cover tools. So you'll need a pair of chain nose pliers and a pair of round nose pliers. These will be used to make your simple loops, which I've already done. And then you'll just need a basic pair of cutters, which is what I have here. You can have a pair of nylon gel pliers to straighten out your wire. My wire was pretty straight whenever I cut it from the spool, so I didn't run my nylon jaw pliers through it. But it's always a good idea to have that in your tool kit, um, just in case if you need it later down the road. OK, so now what I'm going to do is just twist these together and um, wrap my wire around it as tightly as I can. And this sets up a secure end for all of my wires to be braided. And it's got my little um, tail wire here that sticks out through my little bunch there, as you can see. And this will be the part that fits up through the cone later on. So you can see that that just tucks in nice and neatly. I guess we could go ahead and attach it together while we're here. I'm actually going to just string one of these cage beads on Ooh. to kind of give it a nice finish. Let's see if I can do this. I need to kind of work around that, <laughs> that bead. I'm so excited about these bead cones that we brought on too. We've never, we have never stocked bead cones before. And then one of our community members, Brittany Chavers said, Hey, we really need cones for a specific project. Jesse James needs mm -hmm. some cones. So we got in these really great styles and I'm, I'm super excited that you're using copper 
such a cool, cool metal color. For sure. I think it's gonna, it's about as good as it's gonna get through here. I think that diamond, um, you know what? I might use that for, I'm gonna use that for the inside, for one of my connections now that I think about it, because I think that's gonna lend well for that. So let me switch out beads real quick because that's gonna make it look better. Oops. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised um, on that note that you haven't had cones stocked Same. up to I this mean, point, but <laughs> it's better we'll late than never. We'll put them in our bead strands and we'll put them in bead mixes, but we've never sold them individually. And sometimes you just need them. You need some bead cones for your stash. So. For sure, for sure. Especially if you're using silver silk and if you're going to try this technique, I think having the cones at this point in time was very smart. Chose. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick little wire wrap loop here. So I just kind of um, used my round nose pliers as a mandrel to fold my wire around. Um, and then as Sarah mentioned, I did break the neck, but I, I think I'll have time at the end to go over a how a um, how a simple loop is made. Sure, that would be great. But I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this all around. And this will get me nice and set up for connecting my chain here shortly. Cool. Okay. So now I am ready to braid. And this is really where the bulk of my instruction is going to be because it's going to be so important to keep all of your silver silk strands organized. So I highly recommend if you do try this to have different colors, not only because it's just fun to use, but because of the ease it will be to braid these, just so you know kind of where each color is folding where. So I think what I'll do is I'll sort of pair this. Um, I'm gonna put my green to my white and my purple to my white. So that way we kind of know where each strand is living here. I'm gonna spread these out on my table. Let's get it nice and um, organized again. So the first thing I'm gonna do is basically, I'm just going to fold one over the other to get myself started. So I'll take my purple, which happens to sit on the left side and it's gonna work now just on the left side. Um, I'm gonna put it down there and I'm going to take my white and fold it up. Okay, it might look like nothing happened, but trust me, it, it did. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to take my white that's on my left hand side and I'm going to take it up above my green and take my green to the other side. So now all I have to do is repeat that same step back, but I'm going to take the purple, making sure that it remains on the left side. Okay, always keep this organized and take my white back around. <clears throat> We said that the green was gonna be on the bottom side. So we're gonna take that back toward the bottom, take the white over to the other side. That's basically it. But again, just take it slow and just make sure you know where each strand is going. The purple is going to go on the left side because that's what we've designated it to go. And then you just fold your white over. And then the green is gonna go on the bottom toward the right, or to the left, excuse me, and then the white will go on the right side. And there's really, that's like, the that's about as hard as it gets. I think between doing that and making that cone from earlier is really as difficult as this project will get. It's so, so satisfying and fun and easy once you just get rolling on it. So you really just have to remember because the green and your first white there are going from side to side that you always mm -hmm. keep the green on the bottom. Yeah. And then you flip the purple from the, from the top of the board. You always mm -hmm. keep it on the left. And you can do it by the dots too. So for example, um, let me just finish up this wrap. So for example, if you keep your, your green on the bottom side of the, of the dot that's on the right, it'll be easier to remember of like, hey, this belongs on the bottom side. So let me make sure I just keep it there. And I think that's where the dots can kind of come in handy. If the Kumihimo boards that you guys have as well will have dots on it. <laughs> but um, I think that's just the easiest way to remember. So it looks like this was on, you know, 
the left-hand side. So I'll just now flip it back up to the left, take this back down. So let me braid a few more of these and then I'll show you what the chain looks like. And um, it's one of those scenarios too that if, if it's a tight braid, it's gonna take up a little bit more silver silk to do it, to, to get a finished piece. Um, whereas if you've got a looser sort of braid and you can always tighten it up at the end too, if it's a little too loose, um, it'll, you know, kind of relax more and, um, just kind of look like it's effort, effortlessly, um, braided together. But you could see that this is all sort of coming together now in the most, um, you know, just easy way. So if you wanted to have more color on this, you just take away one of the whites and you'd put, you know, a green or a purple or a red instead. I think in the color scheme that I'm using today, it's got mostly purples and greens. Oh, yes. So I could have went that direction. But yeah, that's um, that's how to do a braid. I'm trying to also see, is there um, any questions so far from our... Yeah, Brenda has a question. This is a good one. So she was asking, is this going to be a loose braid or is this going to be a tighter braid that uses more silver silk? Um, the one that I'm going to be doing is going to be more of a loose braid. Um, the, the tighter the braid, the more silver silk it will take because you're, you're trying to squish in a lot of um, silver silk in a, in a short amount of space and not letting it relax. So the bowing of the silver silk makes it take up more space. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, it's the best way that I think I can put it. But a looser braid, just, you know, even if you're braiding hair, if you've got a looser braid, it's just gonna take up less hair <laughs> just cause it's able to relax a little bit more. Neela, you have made me a couple braided silver silk pieces. And let me tell you, this is just like to receive a gift that is just this braided silver silk, maybe with like a little Jesse James bead dangle on the end and wearing one that you made me right now, actually, Neela. It's just like such, such a beautiful gift to give somebody. Or if you are in the make and sell business, perhaps you have an Etsy or do craft shows when, um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, available either post pandemic mm -hmm. or socially distanced craft fairs. This is a really great, um, it's a really great jewelry piece to make and sell or make and give because it just has, it's so elegant and simple. Yeah, I think um, some of my favorite things are those things as well, just elegant and simple. And, um, I, you know, I can't even remember how I thought of this project. I think one of the girls over at Softlex just sent this board to me thinking that I would use it for something down the road. Because they always do that. Um, they always send me stuff that I'm like, why do I have this again? And then later I'm like, I have this because of this. So whenever this idea chime, like, kind of, sort of just popped into my head of like, oh, maybe I should try Kumi Hemo braiding. This is like, this is just the beginner level of it, right? But like, I've had a customer who took, oh gosh, I think she took eight strands of silver silk. Now, mind you, this was a very expensive piece for her, but the result at the end was just unbelievable. It was so, so lavish looking and so beautiful. It's so intricate. It was, it was insane. I mean, such with, talent required to do that is with is, eight pieces with eight pieces can mm -hmm. you believe that it was a flat kumi i think she did a flat kumi hemo braid with eight pieces it was quite extravagant it looked like something that i don't know queen of england or someone would wear um it was very extravagant i would love just a really thick eight piece mm -hmm. Kumi Hemo braid, like just a, like even just a thicker <laughs> thick style that you're doing right now, but just thicker, you know, like yeah. real chunky, big statement rope type necklace. Ugh. I have got something in the works for that. In fact, um, it's not going to be using the Kumi Hemo board necessarily, but I did come up with a new idea. This will be in my future book that's coming out in March. I decided to delay the date a little bit just based on um, based on the things that I've got going on. Whoops, I uh, messed up here. It should be on the bottom side. 
And um, it's got a big, thick braided chain in there that I'm really excited about. Nile, tell us a little bit more as you're doing this braid. Nile mm -hmm. just mentioned that he's got a book coming out and I did know about this one. He had mentioned it, um, I think just before the end of 2020. So I was talking to Jen Banben Shotton the other day. She mm -hmm. was the old editor for um, Beating Daily when Beating Daily was part of Interweave and your mm -hmm. name came up, Nile. And we were both, you know, just saying how much we really love you as a designer and how cool Silver Silk is. And she loves publishing, obviously she's in the publishing industry. And I had mentioned to her that you had a book coming out and how um, I didn't know too, too much about it, but was really just excited to be getting some print media, like hold in your hand, tangible print media. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite designers, you. So what what's going on with this book? Tell us. Yeah, I haven't put out too much PR for it anyways, but, um, and not, not on, not on purpose necessarily. It's just because I am my head's in all over the place. <laughs> but I'm so busy. <laughs> I know, and I keep adding to the list. <laughs> um, so okay, so what's going on is that um, there is, I think, not enough content that is, to your point, print-related materials. Something that is accessible, tangible, um, collectible, even. And what I wanted to do was to create a, 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 a 10 piece set essentially that I could use for teaching purposes and to give customers access to um, some really good designs if they're newbies to what Silver Silk is, this book will be a perfect addition to learning um, in their library of what this material can do at its best. Um, Specifically, though, more so than just a book, I'm actually going to um, sell it as a kit um, instead. So this will be part of a bigger, bigger packaging. Um, and it'll have my packaging will have the book, which will comprise of 10 pieces, and then it'll have five kits inside of it. Um, each of them will be directly coordinated to the projects that are going to be in the book. So you're essentially getting like a bundled deal. And, um, you know, you get all the knitted wire, all of the bindings and stuff that you'll need to make those projects. And so it'll be very, very specific to each project rather than just putting some silver silk in there and calling it good. I want it to be a really tailored experience for my customer. Um, but it's going to be also a, a, a triptych of things because um, silver silk isn't just a single dimensional piece of chain. I also have a hollow mesh that's a wider mesh that you could fill be beads with it. And then I'm gonna start to produce flat mesh um, in both plain colors as well as pearlesque, which has that rainbow tinsel in it. So that'll be the third book, which will, each of those will have 10 projects of their own product line. Awesome. That way there'll be lots of content out there on knowing what to do with Silver Silk. And um, I think it's just geared to, again, help people understand the full breadth of work that is involved, um, or not involved, I guess, the full breadth of work that you can do with, with Silver Silk. I have a, I have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a beaded dream of, of producing a fantastic library of literature, of beading yeah. techniques and just fashion inspiration and being able to offer that to Jesse James Beads customers. So when those books are in print, you let me know, my friend, if you're selling them wholesale, that is something that we will absolutely want to. Absolutely. Definitely um, touch base on that for sure. But yeah, that, that I mean, that's really all it started as Sarah is just, a, I had I had a dream as well and um, <laughs> realized that I have all the, <laughs> that's how it always starts, isn't it? <laughs> all, the, all the good things just start that way. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to create more content and this was my version of that. And to have something tangible to your point, because print is, a, it's a dying media and it's been dying for a long time. And, you know, trying to figure out ways to fulfill the virtual world is one thing with lots of tutorials, but I, I, I still like, I'm a nerd. I still collect stuff at the end of the I day. And, I just think yeah. with everything with, with quarantine and us being forced to be so behind these computer screens, I think print has a chance to come back. I don't know. I, I just hope like, so. How do you guys feel about this? Like 
everyone that's watching, what, do, what are your thoughts on like being able to hold something, like being able to read a paperback book or a hardcover book rather than, you know, downloading it onto your Nook or your e-reader? I, I personally think that there's something so special to being able to actually hold something in your hands. And I think with us being having, having to been behind screens for so much this entire year that mm -hmm. I think we're making a comeback. I, I think you're, you're, you're making, you are coming out with these books. You're publishing these books at the exact right time, Mile. That's what my crystal ball says. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. But um, either way, it, I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because it's just something that I wanted to do. And again, uh -huh. it's, I got the tools to do it. I, you know, I'm using my graphic design secret powers to make it happen and some Kindle publishing. So um you just do what you have to do to make your dream come alive. <laughs> do what you have to do to make your dream come alive. Do you hear that, everybody? That's that is some um, that's some wisdom. <laughs> what you gotta do to make your dream come alive. Exactly. Like it's just a, it's a good casual conversation that I just like to have. Just make your dream come alive. <laughs> So Mila, uh, we get to the end of our rope, literally and figuratively. <laughs> I love that. What comes that was next? funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's just perfect. Um, what I'm doing now is just kind of sizing everything up. Um, it looks like there was a little bit of extra silver silk on this side, so I'm just gonna kind of take this around and get all this stuff lined up. I'm going to have to trim a little bit of this off, but that is perfectly okay. Let me grab some more wire. Again, I don't need very much, probably just going to pick up about six inches. And I'm just going to start to go two of the beads below the chain and back through the silver silk of wherever it seems to hit. So it looks like it's gonna be perfectly aligned right there. Um, all this other stuff can get trimmed off. So let me go ahead and do that. Right here and right here. And same process from earlier. I'm actually just going to stack these together on top by bringing my wire back around. And then I'm going to flip my middle wire here up first. Let me come back around here. That is the wire that you just strung through all the, the, that's the wire that you just strung through all the silver silk, the one that you stick straight up, correct? Yes, yeah. And uh, it just helps to kind of anchor everything and give that little tail wire some extra purpose um, because it's gonna be used to you know, a uh, string through the cone here in a second. And then you basically just work this wire around. I just go a couple times. I, it was a relatively short piece of wire, so I think I can use all of it up, in fact, this time. There we go. And it, I mean, because it is a 20 gauge wire, it's a little bit thicker than your, you know, standard 22 gauge, I think. Um, I guess there really is no standard for wire, but the 20 gauge regardless is thick enough to hold its own weight. So <laughs> um, that'll be perfect for pushing up through the cone. I think what I'm gonna do is actually squeeze this in just a little bit more because I want it to really go into that cone. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah. Now we're talking. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and string that extra green bead on. You can leave this as its own chain because it's so beautiful, but we're just gonna make it extra super dazzly and sparkly with the other beads that I have here. Exciting. I think what's gonna be cool is that this extra chain that we're gonna add on, you can wear this necklace without a clasp. Um, which is kind of what I intended it to be. And um, you can throw it over your head. You can wrap it around your head a couple times, like a scarf, necklace type of deal. Um, and I like that versatility. Yeah, I loved being, I love grab and go jewelry. 
Give me a bracelet. Grab and go jewelry. Yes, I <laughs> yeah. love that. Running out the house, grab your stack of stretch bracelets, throw your necklace over your head, earrings go on in the car, and off you go. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> That's all we need. That's all we need. <laughs> Okay, so there's the braided chain, just so you guys can get a full look at it. Lovely. And okay, so let me actually, let me go and show you just uh, before I get into connecting these, what that simple loop looks like. Yeah. So. Yeah, guys, watch and learn on this one. This is a great, great technique. Yeah, thank you. Um, what I do is I have my pliers. So the, the plier is tapered. So you have a very narrow tip on the end of your plier and you have a very um, wider, fatter tip on the other end. So just depending on where you like your simple loops to be, I like mine to be on the daintier side, something that's a little bit small, uh, smaller and more um, compact. I like to stay sort of in that upper um, third area of my plier. You can mark it with a little Sharpie if you want to, that way you have concise and precise loops each and every time. I kind of just know based on this little like mark that I accidentally made one time by nicking my flyers. Um, and that's kind of where I land up every time. <laughs> so you want to have your um, wire, your piece of wire flush with the top of your plier. If you have a little bit sticking out and you could feel it on your finger, then that's a no, no. So just kind of scale it back and push it back into the plier and then you're ready to go. I have my fingers and my hand like pretty close to the working of uh, to where I'm working. So I want it to be fairly close to the head of my plier. And I just rest my thumb on the flat part of my plier as well. And I rest my other thumb right over that piece of wire so that whenever I'm turning, I can use my thumb to press just a little bit and to really use this as a mandrel just to make sure that all of my loops are nice and round. And I kind of just go where my wrist wants to stop. If I try and overcompensate, I already know that my loop is gonna look wonky. So where it feels comfortable, just stop and reset. And you can see that my wire went halfway over. Kind of, if it's hopefully not too fuzzy. <laughs> and um, where I want to do now is just to continue to where that little, end of my wire touches the longer part of my wire so that you've got this really great P-shaped loop. Okay, so there's P. Once I've done that, I can switch my pliers to these flat nose pliers. And what I wanna do is grasp the section that's where, just the inside of where my tip of my wire hits that longer part. So here's my positioning. I apologize because it is fuzzy, but I think if I get it further away, you can see it. Yep, perfect. Cool. And then I just break the neck, as you mentioned earlier. Is that violent? Absolutely. And I do not support breaking of necks unless it is in jewelry making. And um, you just basically what that means is you just twist back on the head of where that P-shaped loop was. And that centralizes your, um, your loop. So if you can kind of dissect this in half, you can see that the stick part of my, uh, my simple loop is the middle point of where my loop is. So, and that basically concludes a really good looking simple loop. Nile, I just made that along with you and my simple look is on point. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Great, continue. That was fantastic. Thank you, Mila, for showing that to us. You are so welcome. I'm uh, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I, my my way of teaching is different from everybody else's, and so and we all do it for the same purpose. It's just people understand some things easier than others. But again, our goals are all the same. We want them just to know how to do it, and so that's just my technique. I never said it was perfect or right. It's work, it works for me um, personally, and um, hopefully it'll help you in your jewelry making journey as well. So now what we can do is connect our chain together. And for this, I am just going to do what Jesse James Beads makes easy to do, and that is mixing up my beads. <laughs> so I am just gonna lay out a chain and then just connect all my simple loops together and I'll have this really great, like easy, effortless 
beaded chain. Um, one thing I do want to mention is the positioning of my loops. So when I hold this flat, you can see that this isn't exactly facing forward. So you can either do that, you can face it forward um, and just you know have some simple loops that connect with each other. Or you can do what is called the rosary style where you have um, one of the loops that's perpendicular and um, flat against the other one. There's oh. really no right or wrong to this particular technique of how I'm connecting this chain together. Um, but I would say pick one and stick with it. So in this case, I picked how to, or that particular rosary style. So let me go ahead and just do that to all of them. I never realized that that was rosary style, one facing one way, the other perpendicular to it. I, yeah, that's, I kind of have seen them in that style and format for rosaries specifically, um, at least the ones that I've seen. Um, but there is like, the reason for that is that because some items have a flat surface, some beads, um, depending on the way that your simple loops face makes a difference in how the jewelry lays. And because we're using round beads this time, it's not a huge difference, um, but it also helps to know how your uh, loops are facing so that whenever you do storage away your jewelry piece, it's not gonna get tangled up together. Let's see. It looks so cute, Mila. I'm loving this. Like, I just love that I can pick up my beads and then just, you know, don't have to worry about matching them necessarily. They're already all coordinate and I can just, you know, focus on the technique and making a really good looking chain here. Yeah, and the tension beads go so nicely. You're right about being able to take different holidays and and, um, and zhuzh them over to another one because I, I love purple and green for, for Halloween. It's just so witchy and, you know. Mm -hmm. But then uh, Carrie's, you know, so if you made yourself a, a witchy woman necklace for Halloween, carry that one <laughs> in October, in February. Get your Mardi Gras that Tuesday beads out. Yes, and you really, you should never stop being a witch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, I don't know if that's a compliment or how <laughs> Go Anyone on. can take it for what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I never do. So, you know, watch everybody else. That's so funny. So this should be wrapped up here momentarily. Um, and that's again, just I just did this to save time because I wanted to focus mostly on braiding that silver silk and showing and getting folks comfortable um, with that technique. But I do have a, a neck form here that I could show you how this can be worn. So that's another, another thing that I wanna do. Yeah, this is, um, you know, it's, then I, I was saying this the other day, um, that great jewelry making, that great design doesn't need to be hard. You know, there's, I mean, there's mm -hmm. amazing, amazing technical spend several days or a week on a jewelry project designs out there, especially when it comes down to seed, bead, seed beading and weaving. But when it, when you're, when you're coming up with like a fashionable, trendy, wearable, sellable, giftable design, it doesn't need to be excruciatingly hard. You can get some great material. Like you were saying in the beginning, silver silk is a great material to work with for, for instance. Um, and you put these, you work with these really cool components and then poof, <laughs> you have an excellent design. Yeah, I, I think the materials have a lot to do with how easy you can make it for yourself. And, um, you know, again, you guys just do such an easy job to make jewelry making fun, accessible. And I apologize if my, um, if my audio is a little different, my headphones just died. I need to get a new pair of some AirPods because mine are like years old now and they've seen better days. <laughs> Yet I keep using them. <laughs> many and many Zoom conference and Facebook Live this year, I'm sure. <laughs> Deborah says, this is a gorgeous and fun piece, Neelay. I couldn't agree with you more, Deborah. 
Aw, thank you, Sarah. I wonder how many of our friends here are beating at home with us. I don't know. Guys, who is beating at home? Did anyone else just try that simple loop technique? Who's sitting in front of their beads with their tools in front of them right now? They're probably out shopping, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I know I would be. Well, I'm not mad about that if that's the case, but I just, I, I'm sitting here, um, me and Neela were just talking, got a new office set up and it's so nice to have a creative space, like a space in, in the home that's designated to productivity, mm -hmm. and creativity, feels so good. Absolutely. Oh, we've so got I've a got almost all of my beads here. I'm just missing a few more. We got three people that say that they're making. We got Nori Morris, Trisha Gizen. Oh, that's four. Susie Seguin. Sorry, Susie, if I butchered your last name. Paula says that she's making some stuff at home. Karen Yates Waters is nodding a moonstone and kyanite necklace. That sounds cool. Yeah. Sherry Ann is making rosaries for an order. I bet she, I bet Sherry, I bet you knew all about the perpendicular loop. Yes, for sure. That's a fun glass bead. I like that one you just picked up. Right. Um, I think just a couple more beads here, in fact. I, I like literally wanted to use all of them up because I can't just choose some <laughs> over the other, you know? Like, I just gotta have all the beads. Never a bad problem to have. Oh gosh, Denise, that tension bead is so cool. I love, I'm so glad no, you decided that. to go with that one for this design. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, I thought it was like a strategic thing. I was like, she must be like thinking on the same wavelength as me. Just no, with, it, like, oh, this color. It, it totally was. It was very strategic, but I'm glad that you were picking up what I was putting down with those beads and the Mardi Gras colors here. It really goes. So much. <laughs> All right, oh, we've so got Sam Siegel from Sam's Bead Shop here. Hey, Sam. So nice Hi, to see you. Oh, hey. my gosh. He was up, like, late last. Why, why don't you go? You need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Emailing me at, like, 1 in the morning. We're trying to coordinate for a show date. Because um, he's such a cool guy and has such a great energy and such great products and just is a really cool dude. So, like, we're, we're just talking to, like, get a, get a show date together. That is awesome. I found he's a hard worker. I'll tell you that. I he's believe like, it. He is one thousand percent in it for his customers. We'll say that. Yeah, I ran into Sam's Beach Shop randomly. Facebook suggested it to me, and they have Sam has a really fantastic group. Feel free to drop a link so that our fans watching can come over and um and check out the um the group and the community that's over there. But yeah, I found that one, and he's got a great designer that works for him as well. And then it's just, um, I don't know, it's been like, I've seen a lot of, um, let's see Daisy's here. Sorry, here we go. Hey, um, yeah, I've been seeing a lot from Sam's Bead Shop and he's got some really cool check beads and, and uh, gemstones. So that is a, a great member of our industry to follow if you are not yet a fan here on Facebook. For yeah. sure. I'm like, I feel like an old man because like, cause my ear pods are not in. I'm having like a hard time. <laughs> Never, <laughs> <Neelay>. <laughs> <Her>? <laughs> Let's see so, this one. Here is what I came up with. I'm gonna wear it for you. I'm not only gonna just, I'm not gonna throw it on the neck for him. Like we're gonna take this to the next level. All right. All right, so you could do it like this. Guys, how cool is this? Cause like Mardi Gras beads are long and lustrous like that. Ooh. You can, and I just throw it on like this. It looks really good. You can, you know, put all the beads up front or you could wear it behind you. Like, look at that. It looks like I'm wearing two different designs together that coordinate, but God. it's all one necklace. Or a headband. <laughs> <laughs> so versatile. So, um, you know, I was, I was wondering where the beads were gonna go when you were doing the the very very long kumihimo braid. That was took up four packs of of the three foot silver silk, right? 
Yes. Yeah. yeah you need four of because the, they're in three foot lengths. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I did was just I think I think that makes it a great length to work with because you can choose your own color journey, your own color way that way. Um, you could, there, I also have in my personal store the six foot, but I would recommend probably just getting the three to start with um, sure. over at Jesse James Beads and to get different colored ones just so it's easier to know what you're doing to braid. Yeah, that's a really great tip. I love the way that it looks with the white because it it really, you know, has such like a color blocked um, look, dancing yeah. through that braid. Yeah, I'll so just wear it. One, one more time, <laughs> if yeah. we could. Um, but to learn the kumahimo to get four different colors would be really would make it easy so that you know you keep you make sure that the braids are going in the same direction every time i love this piece i love how it came together and man oh man don't you love just a piece of jewelry that's versatile like earrings are always going to be earrings the bracelet is you know you attach it to your wrist but when you have a necklace that you can wear it either long or doubled up like that it gives it such a different look yeah, absolutely. And Mila, it is always such a pleasure to have your designing panache on this on this channel. Uh -huh. Are you so great with techniques? Oh wait, can I show off my simple loop real quick? <laughs> I'm so excited that you did that. Oh my gosh, that's like perfect. <laughs> Thank you. You broke the neck and everything. I love I it. I broke the neck and everything. And I swear I'm not a violent <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is, Mile, your technique and your know-how, your edu the way that you educate is so suave and it just makes so much sense. And then on top of that, you have such an incredible eye for design and fashion and trends. So this has just been such a treat to have you here today. I can't follow up on that. Any, uh, you just shower <laughs> me with so many compliments I all the time. You with the truth, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love your energy, your vibe, the community that you've brought together. Um, you're just so much fun to work with. And for all the years that I've known you, we just, we just do better and better things together. So yeah, I, all the, I get all my hearts. All of them right here. And I'm so excited for you and your journey, Nile. I've, we've, like Nile said, we have been friends for probably the better of five years now. And um, you know, Nile was a designer for Jesse James Beads for two years. He started manufacturing silver silk all on his own, just right at the at the end of that, I believe. And just mm -hmm. to see where you have taken silver silk and your own personal brand, Nile Patel, from there has has been just awesome. And I'm so thrilled every time we get to come together on a stage like this and and do what we do and see what you do amongst um, our entire group here. Yes, every one of those sentiments I feel. For sure. Well, Nile, um, tell our fans where they can find you next, um, and then we'll say our goodbyes. Let us let us know what what is upcoming on the regular for Nile. We well, for the regular, I'm back on Tuesday tutorials on my Facebook page for um, the Silver Silk and More Business Facebook page. So I've got um, Hollow Mesh on the rise here, and so I developed and innovated that product last year, late last year. I didn't put too much content around for it, um, but this year you're gonna see a ton more tutorials on Hollow Mesh um, coming up. So we just did one last week, or this previous, well, wait, wait what is today? This previous Tuesday, <laughs> it happens. I work at home all the time now, so all my days are, are together. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then I've got a project for the Great Beat Extravaganza coming up, and the kits and details are available on um, silversilkonline.com for that. So if you're wanting more information on what that is and how to um, participate, you can go to the Silver Silk and More um, website. And then what else have I got? I've got my project with uh, Beats of Courage coming up here shortly soon as well. So I'll have more information on that. Um, but otherwise I, I'm doing more stuff on Instagram and um, YouTube. So just, you can find me there all the time. Cool. And certainly on Facebook, we've got a group called the Silver Silk Silkies um, as known uh, as, as named by Joan and Ginger, I think, <laughs> <laughs> enduringly. 
and um, it's grown so substantially for when we just started it, like maybe a year or two ago. Um, so that's been amazing. And I share all my close news there um, as well. And otherwise, uh, I'm just on the back end answering emails, orders at silversilkonline.com and um, filling orders. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, guys, make sure you follow Neela on Instagram and YouTube. You can also find Jesse Dinsby's there. We are upping our Instagram game because it's just so fun. And also bringing videos to you on YouTube. All of the products from this project, as well as a replay of this project, will be in your inbox if you subscribe to Jesse Dinsby's email. You'll be receiving that in your inbox this evening around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Kumihimo board, the, the Kumihimo board, all the silver silk, the end caps, the wire, the beads, all that um, can be found at Jesse James Beads. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend, for coming on and sharing this with us. It is always such a delight to have you here. Thank you. I am looking forward to our next video um, at some point, and I'm sure we'll come up with a really kick ass project and we'll just hang out again. You betcha. You betcha. Thank you so much. Guys, you can catch the Jesse James Beads Celebrity Spotlight typically every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next week, we have the pleasure of learning how to use the jewel loom from the weaving goddess herself, Juliana Avalar. So set your clock for that one. On Monday, we will have Jesse James Beads Rising Star premiere with Brittany Chavers, who will be also using the bead cones. And she has a special project worked up for us for that one, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday. Till then, I wish you a very, very wonderful Thursday and a great weekend. Take care of yourselves, be good to each other, stay safe. Nile, again, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Love to you guys out there in the virtual world um, tuning in today and love to you, Sarah. And thank you so much for supporting Silver Silk and more. You betcha, love you, buddy. I'll see you next time, bye. Ha, ha, ha.